A long time ago, in a place where the Yellow River flows, China's story started. It's a story about rulers, fighters, poets, and wise folks. It all began in East Asia, where the rich banks of the Yellow River were like a cradle for a big and long-lasting legacy. The history of China's ruling families is like a giant picture, painted with the brush of time. It's a tale that goes on for thousands of years, filled with the ups and downs of leaders, the courage of fighters, the poems of writers, and the smart thinking of thinkers. It's a story about a place known as the Land of the Dragon, where dragons aren't make-believe creatures but stand for power and strength. Our story begins with the legendary Shia dynasty. While some scholars question its historical accuracy, it remains a pivotal part of China's folklore. At its core is a hero named Yu the Great, who emerges as a central figure in this narrative. His heroic task was to tame the wild and unpredictable Yellow River, a powerful natural force that often posed a threat to the people living along its banks. Yu's journey is characterized by unwavering determination and courage. He confronted the monumental challenge of controlling the river's devastating floods. While there may be scholarly debates regarding the historical authenticity of the Shia dynasty, its cultural significance in China is undeniable. It symbolizes the enduring human spirit in the face of nature's forces and the resolute commitment to forging a better world. A long time ago, after the Xia dynasty, came a more historically known dynasty called the Shang dynasty. It was around 1600 BCE when the Shang leaders ruled the rich lands near the Yellow River. They became famous for using something special, oracle bones. Oracle bones are truly fascinating ancient artifacts. They give us a peek into how early China thought about spiritual matters and their culture. These bones were often made from turtle shells or animal bones. People would write questions about the future on them. Then, they heated these bones until they cracked, and the cracks showed them the answers. These writings not only tell us about how they tried to predict the future, but also show us the very early beginnings of Chinese writing. It's like taking a step back in time and seeing how their writing system started and changed over many years. When the Shang Dynasty faded away, the Zhou Dynasty took the stage. This time marked a big change in China's politics, introducing an idea that would stay important for many years, the Mandate of Heaven. This Mandate of Heaven idea changed how people thought about rulers. It said that a leader's moral goodness was exceptionally important. According to this belief, if rulers governed with fairness and in the people's best interests, they had this special mandate. It was like a divine blessing that made their rule acceptable. But if they ruled badly or unfairly, this mandate could be taken away, and people might rebel and start a new dynasty. This concept made leaders more responsible. It meant that if rulers were bad, there was a reason to rebel against them. This idea shaped how China was ruled for many, many years. During the time of the Zhou dynasty, two important thinkers appeared and made a lasting impact on Chinese culture and thinking. These thinkers were Confucius and Laozi. Confucius believed that social harmony, respecting your parents and ancestors, called filial piety, and having ethical leaders were incredibly important. His teachings said that education was valuable and that individuals played a significant role in making a fair and peaceful society. On the other hand, Laozi started Taoism, a philosophy that said people should live in harmony with the natural world. Taoism liked simplicity, humility, and being connected to the rhythms of nature. These two different philosophies, Confucianism and Taoism, became really important in Chinese thinking. They gave people a rich set of beliefs and values to guide their lives. This is where China's story begins, mixing myths with history, and where wise philosophers shaped the future. Moving forward, we'll explore more dynasties and their unique contributions to this grand narrative. After the Zhou Dynasty, China went through a tough time called the Warring States Period. It was chaotic, filled with conflict and uncertainty. But in the middle of all this mess, a leader named Qin Shi Huang emerged. He later became the first emperor of China. Qin Shi Huang had a big dream to bring together all the Warring States and make one strong empire. His strong will and determination made the Qin Dynasty happen in 221 BCE. This was a huge deal in Chinese history because it set the stage for a central government and changes that lasted a long time. 
One big thing Qin Shi Huang did was build the Great Wall of China. It wasn't just a defense wall, it was a symbol of how his empire came together. The Great Wall stretched for a super long way, with walls, watchtowers, and forts. Building it was a massive project that involved lots of people, like soldiers, farmers, and even prisoners. The Qin Dynasty is known for being strict and having a strong leader. While it brought China together, it also made a lot of people unhappy, but it taught important lessons about how to rule a country. After the short Qin Dynasty, the Han Dynasty became significant. People often call it a golden time in China's history because it was a period of stability and prosperity. The Han Dynasty is like a lesson on learning from the past. They took some ideas from the Qin Dynasty, like rules and laws, but they did it in a nicer way. This made different people in China feel loyal and united. One of the biggest things the Han Dynasty did was open the Silk Road. This was a massive road that connected China to the West. The Silk Road isn't just for trading silk, it's much more than that. It helped people share ideas, religions, and fascinating items between the East and West. The Silk Road wasn't just for trading things, it was like a road for sharing culture. For example, Buddhism came to China through the Silk Road and changed how people thought about things. It also helped spread art, books, and new things. Chinese silk, porcelain, and paper became really wanted in faraway places, showing that China was important for culture and trade. The Han Dynasty's legacy of good times, good government, and sharing culture still matters in modern China. It's an important part of China's history. As the Han Dynasty declined, the Tang Dynasty emerged as a significant cultural and economic powerhouse. This era, often called the Golden Age of China, was characterized by remarkable artistic and technological achievements. The Tang Dynasty, which ruled from 618 to 907 CE, witnessed an unprecedented cultural flourishing. It embraced a cosmopolitan outlook, with its capital, Chang'an, modern-day Xi'an, becoming a melting pot of cultures. Foreign travelers, diplomats, and scholars from distant lands flocked to China, bringing new ideas, religions, and artistic influences. Poetry flourished during the Tang Dynasty, with renowned poets like Li Bai and Du Fu crafting verses that captured the beauty of nature, the allure of the court, and the complexities of human emotions. Poetry reached new heights of sophistication, with themes encompassing both the mundane and the profound. Tang Dynasty art, particularly in ceramics and calligraphy, achieved new levels of refinement. The iconic tri-colored Tang Dynasty pottery, celebrated for its vivid glazes, remains a lasting symbol of Chinese artistic achievement. Tang calligraphy, characterized by its fluid and expressive style, set the standard for generations of Chinese scholars. The Tang Dynasty was also a period of significant technological innovation. Advances in printing, including woodblock printing, made books more accessible to the masses, contributing to the broader dissemination of knowledge. This splendid era of cultural exchange continues to influence Chinese culture and aesthetics today. The Tang Dynasty serves as a testament to the power of a diverse and open society in fostering creativity and innovation. The story of China's dynasties is a tapestry woven with the threads of history, culture, and innovation. In the upcoming sections, we will continue to unravel this rich narrative and explore the legacies of other dynasties that have left an indelible mark on China's history. After the Tang Dynasty, China went into the Song Dynasty, a time of big discoveries and great culture. This time lasted from 960 to 1279 CE and is known for its remarkable advancements in science, technology, and art. In the Song Dynasty, China did many impressive things. One of the most important was inventing movable type printing. Bi Sheng came up with this idea, and it changed how books and writings were made. It meant more people could read and learn. They also started using paper money, which was way easier than heavy metal coins for buying things. This made trade and business simpler, and it helped the economy grow. In farming, they got better too. They started growing fast ripening rice, which made more food and helped lots of people. In art, the Song Dynasty was amazing at painting and making pottery. They painted detailed pictures of nature, and their porcelain pottery was really fancy, with beautiful designs. The next part of China's history takes us to the Yuan Dynasty. 
It was different from the dynasties before it, because it was started by the Mongols, led by Genghis Khan and later leaders. Mongol rule in China brought new things and the sharing of cultures. The Mongols, who were known for their nomadic way of life, shared their traditions with China. In return, the Chinese showed the Mongols how settled farming societies worked. One of the most fascinating things during the Yuan Dynasty was the making of the Yuan Dynasty texts. These books contained a wealth of knowledge about math, stars, and medicine. They were a blend of Chinese and Mongol ideas. The Yuan Dynasty also made China more connected to the rest of the world. The Silk Road, which was a major trade route between China, Europe, and the Middle East, was extremely active. It allowed people to trade things, share ideas, and mix different cultures. Even with the big changes in Mongol rule, the Yuan Dynasty is still important in China's history. It shows how China could learn and adapt to new things. After the Yuan Dynasty, China moved into a new time when the Ming Dynasty began. The Ming Dynasty lasted from 1368 to 1644 CE and is famous for its amazing buildings and interesting things in culture. One of the biggest and most impressive buildings from the Ming Dynasty is the Forbidden City in Beijing. This huge place was the Emperor's Palace, where the government worked for almost 500 years it's incredibly ornate with big halls, pretty courtyards, and beautiful decorations showing how skilled and artistic people were back then. The Ming Dynasty also did great things in making ships and exploring. A famous Chinese explorer named Zheng He led big sea trips all the way to Africa and the Middle East. These trips showed how good China was at technology and how its culture spread around the world. Art and writing were also big in the Ming Dynasty. Famous poets like Li Bai and Du Fu wrote beautiful poems about nature, the royal court, and human feelings. They also made lovely blue and white pottery that everyone loved. The Ming Dynasty's legacy of architectural splendor, exploration, and cultural achievements continues to captivate the world, underscoring China's rich and diverse history. As we continue through China's history of dynasties, we come to the Qing Dynasty. The Qing Dynasty was the last dynasty in China from 1644 to 1912 CE. It was a time of big changes. The Qing Dynasty started with the Manchu people from northeastern China. They became the rulers after the end of the Ming Dynasty. This was a very important moment in China's history because it began almost 300 years of Qing rule. During the Qing Dynasty, China got bigger, reaching into Central Asia and parts of Tibet. The dynasty had a mix of Chinese and Manchu customs. It was a time of both peace and tension with challenges inside China and pressures from Western countries. One of the most famous things from the Qing Dynasty is the Forbidden City in Beijing. It was still the Emperor's Palace, and the Qing emperors added their own unique designs to it. However, in the 19th century, China had trouble with Western nations, leading to conflicts and the Qing Dynasty getting weaker. Events like the Opium Wars and the Boxer Rebellion showed how China struggled to keep control. The Qing Dynasty ended in 1911 with the Xinhai Revolution, which created the Republic of China. This was the end of the time of dynasties in China and the start of a new part of its history. China made big improvements in areas like healthcare, education, and building things like roads and bridges. They also introduced a rule called the one child policy to control how many people there were. In 1949, China had a big change they started the People's Republic of China, PRC. This was a very important time, and it was led by Chairman Mao Zedong and the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Starting the PRC meant leaving behind the old way of having emperors and becoming a socialist republic. It brought lots of changes in how things worked in society, politics, and the economy. One of the first things they did was change how the land was owned and make farms work together. Chairman Mao did some really big things like the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution. These were all about changing China's economy and culture a lot, but they also caused problems and made things tough for many people. Even with all the problems, the PRC made big improvements in healthcare, education, and other areas. China also started to deal with other countries in a new way and made friends around the world. The People's Republic of China changed China a lot and keeps shaping it even today. After the difficult times of the Cultural Revolution, China started a new way of doing things under Deng Xiaoping's leadership. This was in the late 1970s, and it was a big change in China's economy and politics. 
Deng Xiaoping focused on making China's economy stronger, more modern, and connected with other countries. They changed things to make the economy more market-oriented, which meant they welcomed foreign money and trade. They also made special economic zones where foreigners could invest in China's development. These changes made China's economy grow a lot and helped many people get out of poverty. China became a big player in making things and selling them worldwide. They also built cities and roads faster than ever before. Along with economic changes, China started to be more open to Western ideas and culture. People started buying more things, and traditional Chinese culture became popular again. China's transformation during this time was a big deal, both in China and around the world. It made China a major player on the global stage. As we move into the 21st century, China has become a powerful and influential global player. The changes that started in the past continue to shape China's path, and now it faces new challenges and chances. A big part of China's modernization has been the fast growth of its cities. Many people from the countryside have moved to the cities for better jobs. This led to the construction of tall buildings, modern transportation, and high-tech industries. China's economy has also changed. It's not just about making things anymore. Now it's about technology and new ideas. China is a leader in things like smartphones, online shopping, and clean energy. Companies like Huawei and Alibaba are known around the world. China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, is a big project. It's about building things like roads and ports to connect China with other countries in Asia, Europe, and Africa. It's making China even more important in world affairs. China is also exploring space. They've sent missions to the moon and Mars, and people everywhere are watching. China cares about the environment, too. They're working on clean energy and green technology to tackle problems like pollution. But as China grows, there are problems. The air isn't always clean, and sometimes there's not enough water. Some people are much richer than others. The government is trying to fix these problems while keeping the economy strong. China's relationships with other countries are getting more complicated. They're being more assertive in places like the South China Sea, and they're getting more involved in international groups. People are wondering what this means for the world. In the 21st century, China has to find a balance between growing the economy, taking care of the environment, and working with other countries. China's journey in this time will shape what happens in the world for a long time. China has a long, fascinating history. It's like a giant tapestry with old traditions and new ideas, ruled by emperors and shaped by modern changes. This story keeps going and each part makes China's history even more interesting. Chinese people are strong and good at adapting. From ancient times to today, China has faced challenges and celebrated achievements. They focus on unity, creativity, and preserving their culture. As China moves forward, it carries the wisdom of Confucius, the adventures of Zheng He, the reforms of Deng Xiaoping, and the dreams of its people. It's a story of strength and change, looking back at history while forging ahead. China will continue to make a mark on the world, contributing to global progress and facing 21 saint century challenges. It's a story of resilience, transformation, and the enduring pursuit of a better future.